Change the world. Dropping two atomic bombs was something never before seen and never seen since. A lesser part of the story is the airfield in Wendover that played a pivotal role. But as new specialist Andrew Adams shows us, that story recently returned to the spotlight as a 97-year-old veteran was honored. At a historic airfield. Wendover should be recognized. It's a big deal. A group had gathered to welcome an old friend. Wendover traffic, dock 72, B-29 is going to back taxi down runway 30 Wendover. Well, that thing won the war in the Pacific. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Yeah. Norris Jernigan's memories of World War II had been so closely tied to the B-29. Beautiful. Shiny, yeah. And the base. Trained right here. Right here. Yes, you betcha. Where those fateful missions were born. Wendover is a launching pad for ending that war. Uh-huh. In 1944, Jernigan was a young intelligence clerk who'd just been assigned to this remote outpost. We had been selected to be the bomb squadron of a new group that would be handling a new secret weapon that, if successful, uh, should shorten the war by at least two years. The training was carried out under the utmost secrecy. To veteran crews, it's just another day's work. You're not to talk to anybody about anything. And it prepared the 509th composite crew for what was to come a year later at Tinian Island. Aircraft number 82 was pulled over the loading pit, and now it had uh, a name on it, Enola Gay. And at 2.45 a.m. on uh, August 6th, Enola Gay took off from Tinian with the uh, 9,700 bomb in its bomb bay, headed for Hiroshima. He zeroed in on it and released the bomb, and 46 seconds later, thing exploded. The world changed. <laughs> it's a time that still weighs heavily on the old vet. The thing was designed to end a horrible war. And it did. What more do you want? What Jernigan wanted was never to forget those events, nor the context for them. I'm glad it was bombs were dropped. I'm glad they've never been used again. I hope they never will be. He's one of the few left to carry that context into the present. You know, the 509th, we had almost 1,800 men in it. We don't know if we're the last two or not, but evidently we're the only two that can be located at this time. It's emotional thinking of how many friends are gone. And it was sharing those stories from long ago that brought Jernigan back to his training ground. How old are you, sir? Taking a step back into history. I'll be 97 in a couple of weeks. By loading up for a flight on dock. Once you get down in there, it'll be good. You guys ready in the back? We are ready to go. Let's uh, do a pre-flight checklist. The kind of plane that was so pivotal in ending World War II. Right scanner in position. Left scanner in position. Batteries. One, two, three are on. Nobody can change the past. Let's see if I can get these big bad boys started here. <laughs> two, four, three. But they can relive it. They crank those engines up. I love to hear the sound. They can reflect on it. I'm proud of the fact that I was part of it, a small part. We'll spin around at the end. I take the radios. Okay, yeah. Down on my two six one over 17 souls on board. And they can honor the service members who did what was asked of them. It's just a great thrill. That's all I can say. Carrying a legacy ever onward into the future. I hope that uh, the uh, story can be continued on. Now back behind it, just all 6,000. 15 set. Verified 15. We're good to go. This is a historic place. It's just great to come back and remember. Andrew Adams, KSL 5 News.